Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight is February 4th, 2014. I'm going to call to the order the uh, West Covina City Council meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is our invocation. If I could have police officer, West Covina police officer Jeff Mosley, please come forward. Please rise. Heavenly Father, in your love you sent us your Son, a servant. He humbled himself for our sake and accepted death on a cross. You raised him to unending life. We give you thank for your thanks for your presence here tonight and for the freedom we have to gather as a community in order to discuss important matters that will influence and shape the future of our city. We ask for your grace and divine blessing this evening as we address these matters. Lord, we pray that you will give our Mayor Steve Herford, Mayor Pro Tim Frederick Sykes, and fellow City Council members James Toma, Mike Spence, and Corey Warshaw the ability to lead our city with integrity, humility, and compassion in accordance with your will. Give them wisdom and guidance as they work diligently to find solutions and address each of the difficult challenges at hand. Bless each person here tonight. Draw us closer together as a community and help us to set the example for other communities around us. We ask these through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Councilmember Toma will lead us in the pledge. Please place the flag, hand over your heart, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, roll call. Mayor Herford. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Sykes. Here. Councilman Spence. Here. Councilmember Toma. Here. Councilmember Warshaw. Here. Okay, City Attorney, uh, we, have a, we were in closed session, so we have a report out. Yes. Um, council and members of the public, uh, we, the City Council and the Successor Agency Board met in closed session to consider five, five items. First item was a lawsuit regarding City of West Covina versus Hassan Imports Partnership. On that matter, the uh, Special Counsel gave a briefing to the City as to the um, current status of that case and received direction from the council and the successor agency regarding that litigation. There was no reportable action taken. The second item was uh, the lawsuit of Citizens Land Use Equity versus City of West Covina et al. And the city received a briefing on the status of that case and they gave direction to the council on that item and there was no reportable action taken. The third and fourth items were <clears throat> anticipated litigation, and on both of those items, the city council received a briefing from the city attorney and the city attorney's office, and the city attorney received direction from the council on those items, and there was no reportable action taken. The fifth item was a matter of uh, property negotiations regarding MV transit lease agreement. Um, the City Council was briefed by staff on the terms of those negotiations and the received direction on what type of lease agreement to enter into, and there was no reportable action taken on that item. That concludes my report. Thank you, City Attorney. Uh, City Manager, any changes to the agenda? Uh, there are no changes to the agenda tonight. However, I do would like I would like to make a, an introduction of some of the person that everyone's heard about. If I could have David Faulkner come down. Uh, David Faulkner has been appointed our new police chief for the city of West Covina, and you know I believe it's very fortunate that we, we brought him aboard, and I'm, I'm very pleased, and I'd like for him to say a few words, if you don't mind. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the honor of being able to sit in front of you, including uh, my assistant city manager, Mr. Mike Lee, members of council, mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you today, as well as the citizens that are in the community. 
Uh, West Covina's got an outstanding reputation as a city, and certainly the police department is one that I've always wanted to join, and I'm honored to stand before you today to do just that. Um, other than to be able to say I'm, I'm very appreciative to be here, I certainly don't want to take time away from our council and the business that they have to do tonight, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, and we welcome you to West Covina. Okay, tonight, um, I'm under the weather, so um, I'm not going to come down and do the presentations if that's okay, but I'm going to call forward our staff people to handle those. So uh, if I could have uh, Community Services Director Chris Freeland and Suzanne Manriquez from the Field Service Representative with Los Angeles County Supervisor Gloria Molina's office, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, community here in West Covina. Tonight we're very pleased to have our representative from Supervisor Gloria Molina's office here to make a presentation to the City of West Covina and to our Senior Center. So at this time, if I could have J.R. Gaetan, our um, chef of our Senior Center, Holly Smith, our assistant chef, come forward, and Adrian Reynosa, our su Senior Citizen Supervisor, come forward as well to, uh, to receive this um, presentation. Thank you. Mayor Herford, council members, uh, I'm honored to be here tonight on behalf of Los Angeles County Supervisor Gloria Molina. And in case some of you don't know what the award's about, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. On January 16th, the Los Angeles County Community and Senior Services Area on Aging acknowledged the city of West Covina with a 2013 Distinguished Site Award for Outstanding Senior Nutrition Services. The Distinguished Site Award exemplifies exceptional hospitality, helpful service, creating a comfortable home-like setting for participants to enjoy while socializing with their friends, delicious healthy food, as well as consistently meeting high standards for food safety. It's a well-deserved award for the City of West Covina for providing these exceptional nutrition services. And I do want to comment that I have visited the Senior Center and Mr. Reynosa, and I've always been very impressed. Uh, we came to uh, talk to them about some field trips for the seniors and it, and I looked at the agenda of already planned field trips and they were just outstanding and it just it seemed like a very very vibrant and very uh, I'm pleased to be entering my senior years and and looking at these kinds of programs and services so on this occasion though it is a privilege to be here to commend you the city staff the West Covina uh, Senior Center and the wonderful uh, leadership on staff with the silver thermometer award uh, West Covina Senior Center, there are about 110 sites throughout the county, and the, this senior center is one of only 14 to receive this award. And again, it's, not, it's about the quality of the food, but also the quality of the experience. So it's my honor to present, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, the Silver Thermometer Award to the West Covina Senior Center. And Mr. Mayor, and to the residents, um, What's really nice about this award is West Covina really is the envy of the communities in LA County. And one of the reasons is, is because we are one of the only food programs that still has a chef preparing the daily meals. And so that's a, a testimony to the city council for providing the funding to continue that type of program. And so that is why we see a lot of people from all over the area coming to the West Covina Senior Center. So we're very privileged to have that experience as well. I'd like to call forward our city manager, Christopher Chung, for a presentation. Another person I'd like to put a spot, if I can have uh, Paul Wakamari come down. Let me tell you a little bit about Paul. You know, when the prior police chief retired, I was on, I immediately got on the phone and I was fortunate enough to get a hold of Paul. And even before I can ask him whether he'd, he'd come on board here, he said yes. 
So, um, you know, it was, it was very, uh, it's like one of those times that in your life that you're just fortunate. You know, you're fortunate that you, you come across people that, that have uh, very respectful, that have uh, high integrity, and it's very well liked within organizations. So, as far as I was concerned, I really got lucky and fortunate to have Paul with me this, this short time, and I'm sorry to see you leave. So, um, Paul did, uh, as, as a thank you for be, being our police chief, we want to present you with the certification. And he has such a long history that the, it's such, such a small type in here that I had to actually blow it up, but I'm not going to read it all. <laughs> So first of all, Paul started his career with the city of Wascovy in 1981, and he served in various capacities throughout the years. Uh, he, he became a police officer in 1983, a police corporal in, in 1996, a police sergeant in 1999, a police lieutenant in 2003, and then a police commander on June 27, 2009. Um, and then he, oh, I'm sorry, he also became the assistant police chief on January 10, 10th, 2013. Uh, Paul actually retired from us, and that's why I had to bring him back. He retired from us on March 16, 2013, and, and came back to work with me on June 8th to January 31st. And uh, with that, uh, we want to remember Paul for being a very uh, uh, highly respected, with a person with high integrity, and the council is <coughs> awarding you with this resolution that it says, now therefore, be it resolved, that the City Council of the City of West Covina expresses its sincere appreciation and thanks to Paul Lacamari for his tremendous contributions to the community. The West Covina Police Department in the City of West Covina and highly commends him for the manner in which he carried out his responsibilities and duties as Police Chief of the City of West Covina for the West Covina Police Department. I want to say thank you and congratulations for retirement. And um, it said that there's city tile. I think you really accepted that. So, all right. So I want to hand it to you for you to say a few words. All right. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to also thank the mayor, who I've worked with for uh, so many years, and the entire city council, but mostly uh, you, Mr. Chung. Um, it was truly an honor uh, for me to be called back. Uh, you know, just just shortly into my retirement, and uh, being asked to serve as the interim chief. And it was, it was a great growing experience. There was nothing that I could have hoped for that would have capped off my career like that experience. And I just thank you for the opportunity. It was, a, it was really tremendous working with you and the city staff. And, and let me tell you, these, these folks are all out here working hard for you every day. I'd also like to thank, there's, there's a lot of members of our police department um, for the support over the last uh, nine months. Serving as interim chief has really just been incredible. We've accomplished a lot. Uh, and, and a final message, um, council city manager has selected a new police chief for this department. As someone that, that I've known for many years, uh, Dave Faulkner, who, who you just met, he's, uh, he's a man of great character and integrity. He's smart. He knows what he's doing. He has uh, 32 years of experience himself, and I'm very, very comfortable that we're leaving you in good hands. So uh, congratulations, sir, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chief. Okay, that moves us into oral communications. Our first speaker tonight is Lola Finley. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank the chief. He did a great job in his nine months. Um, he really helped my community out greatly. And so um, if you can see me, I don't know if he left yet. I just want to thank uh, Chief um, Paul Luckmore for um, all his service uh, to our community. Um, uh, good evening, council members, city staff residents. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Chief uh, Faulkner. He attended our uh, neighborhood watch meeting this weekend, and we appreciated him um, taking the time on a weekend to come uh, speak to myself and my neighbors. I wanted to thank James Toma and Fred Stikes too. Um, at this time, I want to extend the offer to Mike Spence, Steve Herford, and Corey Warshaw. Um, when we have our next meeting, I'll give you a ring and uh, leave a message. Steve, I need your phone number or email. 
And so, um, and hopefully you guys can come and just address, uh, speak to my neighbors. Um, before I go any further, I want to let you know that we start three more new neighborhood watch. Um, one is the east side of Shadow Oak, um, all the way to Nogales. The second one is the back side of my uh, block uh, to Giano, all the J's and K's. The third one is going to be in uh, Francisquito and Merced area. Um, I, I, I'll give you the names later if you guys would like to know who they are. Um, but any of the residents in the in the forum or watching on television, if you'd like to join, please, um, you can get my name and number from the city council members. Um, but I just want to let you know that, um, you know, we hope to help the police and, you know, keep our neighborhood safe and with graffiti and shopping carts and just making us a better community and, you know, more united. Um, on another note, um, in October, we came to the city council members, some neighbors of mine, and we brought a bunch of issues that we wanted to address, which um, the chief, such as uh, Paul Luckmore, helped us address regarding uh, burglaries and crime and other issues on our street. Um, this, uh, city uh, manager Chris Chung and uh, Shannon Herford, I mean Shannon um, Yahtzee, um, came out and addressed some issues, but we still have some issues that haven't been addressed. And so, because I'm on a five-minute time, I'm going to go real quick. Um, one is the speed on Woodgate. They came out, they did a survey. Um, we asked for either humps, turtles, or stop signs. Um, the humps are out, the turtles are out, and now we're waiting for the stop signs and just kind of want to get a definitive date. And I've been working with Shannon personally, but this is just kind of for me for the record because we had our meeting and my neighbors are uh, concerned. We have um, uh, two homes that have residents, uh, disabled residents, and they have, we have the wheelchairs, we have a couple of blind spots, and we're concerned with uh, uh, the neighbors pulling out as, as they age, including myself. I have difficulty, not age, but just have difficulty getting out of my cul-de-sac. And um, we also have no safe area except for the top and the bottom to cross to the park. And one of my neighbor's husband had a stroke, and I saw him this weekend at the meeting and trying to cross the street, and my concern is, uh, that someone getting injured, so uh, kind of would like to, a definitive time frame of when the stop sign is going to be put up. Um, I brought this up uh, regarding Ginridge Park. Um, uh, James Toma was there, Councilman James Toma. He could attest to this. Um, you know, I had to go make reservation. I couldn't make reservations because Ginridge Park is a park that you don't reg make reservations. I had to get there early, clean up the mess. Uh, before the trashes were overflowing because there was so much trash. Um, we'd like to make that Ginridge Park a park where you have to make reservations. Um, they have to leave their driver's license or a credit card or something. If they don't clean up their mess, then they should have to pay a fee. Um, you know, I, I'm getting tired of cleaning up my park. So I, I know it, it's not, you know, Cameron Park. I know it's just Shadow Oak Park, but I, I, we, we as residents want to make sure that um, it stays clean and we think the people who use it should be held accountable. And again, we're tired of cleaning up after them. Um, the other thing is the graffiti um, on Amar and Azusa, which is not the only area. The leasing signs that the buildings have, um, they're being tagged and because they're not sprayed with um, uh, uh, pre-coated, they can't clean the graffiti. I spoke to the graffiti guy and he said he couldn't clean it, A, because it was on private property, two, because they don't have the coating. Um, he contacted the owner for me because he knew him personally. Um, that was 70 weeks ago. It wasn't done. That He called code enforcement. It still wasn't addressed. Now seven weeks, the tagging's still there and um, his hands are kind of tied. So, um, and I'm on him all the time for, for graffiti in our community, and, and so he can only do so much. Um, so hopefully we can do something about making it mandatory that the cities who have leasing signs, they code it with um, something that they can just wipe off the graffiti, because seven Lola, weeks. you have five minutes. Okay, can I just bring real quick, um, the neighbors brought up BKK. Um, they were concerned about the water and the testing, wanted to know if we were still doing that. And um, we do. Okay, we do. Okay, and and then the general plan. Um, the, I want to make sure that when we hire someone, they keep our vision in plan in, in line. That we want to remain a single-family residence home, and that we um, 
we don't use, our, you know, like I know Snow Creek, uh, Shadow Park was used for collateral, and they were talking about making condos there. I want to make sure that um, it's not condos, our parks remain parks, and we bring some good, strong anchor businesses in here. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Colleen Rosati. Hello. Hello, Mayor Herford and council members, staff, residents. Um, I'm here today as the president of West Covina Beautiful and to announce the upcoming birthday bash for the city. She's celebrating 91 years, and I must say she looks pretty good for her age. Um, we will be having it at South Hills Country Club on February 19th. Social hour begins at 6, dinner at 7, and awards and festivity to follow. This year we are recognizing a business for the beautification that they've done and a resident along with art and public places which we've added. We are collaborating with the city and I'm working with Chris Freeland and they will be honoring a two residents, one for community service and one for rec recreational service. I have gotten some of your RSVPs. I sincerely appreciate that and I look forward to seeing you. So thank you. Thank you. Sherman Griffin. Mayor Herford, members of the council and ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sherman Griffoni. I'm the vice president and chief operating officer of Quest Literacy Consortium. In that capacity, I serve as the director of the Inland Valley Regional Spelling Bee, or IVRSB. My purpose in coming today is to solicit West Covina's uh, financial support for the IVRSB, and we've submitted a letter to your city manager in that regard. Now the question begs then, why should you provide financial support? And the answer is, is that the Inland Valley Regional Spelling Bee provide significant benefits to the children and schools of West Covina. To understand how, may I tell you a bit about the Inland Valley Regional Spelling Bee. E.W. Scripps Company, a national company, sponsors and operates the longest continuously running educational promotion in the United States. It is an annual spelling and vocabulary contest. It involves over 280 spelling champions from, uh, from regions worldwide. The IVRSB is this region's sponsor, and we conduct a qualifying bee for this region's students to get the opportunity to attend the Scripps National Spelling Bee as a contestant. On March the 1st, school spelling champions from 108 enrolled schools will be invited to come to the Mount San Antonio College to compete in the 2014 IVRSB. This includes 10 schools from West Covina. Uh, there are two school districts in the West Covina City uh, that have schools enrolled to participate in the IVRSB this year. Uh, records from Scripps indicates that over 1,800 elementary and middle schoolers from West Covina are participating at the school level in this program. A student will win and prevail at Mount Sac, and that person will be named the champion of the Inland Valley Regional Spelling Bee. Quest Literacy will send that champion and a chaperone to compete at Bee Week at the Scripps National Spelling Bee at the end of May of this year. Second, third place winners at Mount Sac will receive cash awards. This endeavor requires considerable financial resources, both to stage the event and to provide primary and secondary prizes. We ask that you help us with the financial burden of this program because it provides the youth of your community the following benefits. The IVSB program provides an intellectual and fun competition for all who want to enter. This program builds literacy skills in the competitors and these literacy skills are commensurate with the national core standards for language arts. It's a program designed to be an adjunct to the 
to a school's curriculum. This program builds personal skills in the competitors. Uh, it builds skills like confidence, good study habits, planning and time management skills, goal settings, and the ability to learn how to focus. The program builds interpersonal skills in the competitors. Commitment, listening skills, speaking skills, and sensitivity to the needs of others. It provides benefits to the schools and communities. It represents a great return on investment uh, by resulting in better trained, more prepared, and more competent youth that will become the citizens of this community. And it provides significant recognition to the educational community and to the community in general. By that I mean, imagine being able to claim that the best speller in the world is from your community because he or she became the champion of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. We ask that you help us please stage the Inland Valley Regional Spelling Bee by approving our request. Help us help the youth of your community. Does anyone have any questions? You have something that you're going to provide us with the information on how we support you. Uh, yes, sir. We submitted a letter to your city manager. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next speaker, Lisa Mayo. Hello, my name is Lisa Mayo, and I'm from the city of West Covina, but I'm here representing West Covina Women's Club. Uh, Mayor Herford, Mayor Pro Temp, Sykes, and I'll see the councilman. I actually came here because last year I came to both everyone here, the council asking for help and helping us get scholarships for our youth. And so I'm here just really to thank you at how quickly you were able to get that done and email and, and um, Mr. Sykes so was able to call and you were able to email. So I really just want to thank you because I th we got really great response and so we'll be able to give at least 15 scholarships for our teens. So thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Lisa. Trudy Saltmarch. Uh, to begin with, um, I think the council voted for the correct direction on the general plan last, last city council meeting. So I applaud you for that. The, the one red flag that went up for me was consultant. In private business, I have dealt with consultants before, and the result has usually not been good. And the reason is, number one, anybody can put the consultant after their name. I mean, doesn't matter. You can just stick it there. But they came in without a working knowledge of the business. They were just looking from the top down, and from the top down can look very different from the, from the bottom up. Uh, they can get quick results that look real good for a quarter, but long-term results don't work. And that's what concerns me the most. So I hope you'll look very carefully into their background. Do they have any experience in city government? What direction are they going to be given and by whom? What oversight are they be go going to be given and by whom? How, how will their contract be written? Well, we have the ability to cancel the contract if they are not delivering the kind of results we want. We just need to be certain that the eye is kept on the ball for long-term results. We, yes, we do need to do what we need to do to be a well-functioning city, but we want to remain a single-family dwelling community. We don't want to become too dense. We don't want uh, industrial places put where they're no good. We don't want apartment buildings disturbing. I mean, I know there has to be apartment buildings, but we need to be careful where they're placed. Um, I can tell you I came out of the banking industry. A lot of decisions were made on a short-term basis for a while, and look what happened to the banking industry. They didn't used to do it that way. They used to look at long-term results. We don't want that. If we're going to go to this trouble, let's at least keep our eye on the long-term results, whatever we decide to do. Thank you. 
Thank you. Sorry about my voice. It's okay. I'm the same boat. William Elliott. Is there a William Elliott here? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Herb Redholtz? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Good evening to you and to the council members, staff, and everybody here. I'm up here tonight on item number nine, which is council member Warshaw's uh, proposal to um, use the public art funds for the uh, Veterans Memorial. And I am 1,000% in favor of that. Uh, that uh, particular project has been kind of languishing for a while, and I think that this is a very creative and useful way to use that, uh, those funds to get that done. On the second part of that, number two, I have some, I'm not convinced on that. Uh, I sat on the Planning Commission many years ago when the Art and Public Places uh, was initiated, and uh, we started to take in funding for that. And at that time, we contracted with a public art consultant to show us the ropes, show us the way, and help us facilitate uh, public art and the use of it in the city of West Covina. And I believe we contracted with this individual for about $25,000. Uh, and I'll tell you what, when I was going through that process, I listened and I learned and, um, you know, I got a lot out of that, and I'm sure uh, staff did the same, th same thing. So I am not convinced that we need to be spending $10,000 for an art consultant. I think we could do it uh, on our own uh, with our own uh, people that have been involved, been involved for the last uh, several months with this project and trying to get it done and completed. I think they, they are uh, up to the job. I think staff uh, is uh, well prepared and, uh, and well uh, remembers what was taught and shown to them by the previous art consultant. So I realize it's not general fund money being used, but it's money being used that perhaps could be used for something else. Uh, uh, but uh, the, what I want to leave you with is I'm uh, uh, Councilmember Warshaw, thank you for uh, doing this and uh, taking the lead on this to get this done. But uh, I am not convinced that we need to be spending $10,000 for an art consultant. I think we can do it fine on our own and save that money. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Art. Mayor Herford, Mayor Pro Tem, Fred Sykes, Mike Spence, James Tomo, Corey Warshaw. Um, it's interesting tonight, I'm the third speaker about education, and I'm going to lift up a student from one of our high schools. He's a senior, and he was a member of the team that was at USC Galen Center on Saturday. And the topic was World War I. And they came in in top form. And they had seven seconds to respond on this little handheld gizmo. And the mother wrote in LA Times on Sunday that they had worked till like 10 and 11 o'clock at night and some days 24 hours. Now those people need to be honored here. They need to be written up in the Examiner, San Gabriel Valley Tribune, uh, the, the, uh, any, any newspaper, anything that we have, we need to lift them up. And I don't know if they got their training from Mr. Sherman's group or not, but it's an incredible thing. And this is your alma mater. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. Lloyd Johnson. Good evening, Mayor Herford, Council Members. Tonight I have a few items I want to talk about. 
First, I want to talk about is item number seven. This is the urgency ordinance establish a moratorium to prohibit the insurance of approvals for the operation of adult-oriented business to study uh, development standards. This is one moratorium I definitely agree with you. We need to set standards in our city, so I hope we look at this real close. The next item is items number nine, which is the Veterans Memorial Public Arts. I really hope this council will go along with this idea. As a city, we really need to have this memorial built to honor those heroes who paid the ultimate price for our country. We have been trying for the last few years to get this memorial built without any success. This is a great idea we've, we've talked about it before, and like I said before, I know Council Member Hoof has been on from day one, and he supported it 100 percent, and I want to thank Councilman Warshaw for bringing it back up, and I hope we can move forward in this direction. <coughs> Next thing I want to talk about is going to start out with $3,700,000. That is what we paid since 2010 to 2013 in lawyer fees on the auto dealership lawsuits. This is just a drop in the bucket of our tax dollars being wasted on a no-win situation for either side. Everyone has to understand this lawsuit has been going on since 2006. So we are talking about millions or more of our tax dollars that has been wasted on a lose-lose situation. It's time to end this great big waste of our tax dollars. We need more police and fire personnel. Our tax dollars are being thrown away on lawyers, the only ones who will win in this situation. It's time to move forward and let's end the lawsuit. Next thing I'd like to ask a question. I would like to know why we can't find out which way an item in closed session was voted on. Without saying which council member voted one way or the other, we should be allowed to know if it was a 3 to 2 or 4 to 1 or 5 0 oh, to accept or deny or do nothing. We call this transparency and accountability. I think as taxpayers, we should have a right to know if you guys are voting on something without giving what you can't say about how it was. If you vote on something, we should know if it was a 5 0 oh vote to deny it or 5 0 oh to accept it or whichever way it goes. I hope you guys will take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I know that uh, the city attorney, when we report out from closed sessions, if there are items to report out as far as a vote, you do that at that time, correct? Yes. Yeah, so under the Brown Act, only certain types of actions that are taken are reportable. And the reason for that is that you don't want to disclose strategies and so forth or litigation issues. When a vote is taken where the action is reportable under the Brown Act, I am required to record and announce to the public the vote, who voted aye and who voted no. And I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Shirley Buchanan. Good evening, Mayor Hereford, Mayor Pro Tem Sykes, and members of the City Council. First of all, I want to say how proud, proud I am every time I come to the council at the very beginning to know that we are saluting the flag and that we are having a prayer service. It isn't many city councils that are giving this to their residents. Thank you. Uh, it is uplifting to many residents to see the new council members bringing forth many of the issues that they campaigned on. We believe that transparency is the order of business now. For at least five of the past ten years, the city appeared, according to the previous council, in firm financial footing as far as the general fund and the surplus funds were concerned. Starting about 2006, those surpluses started showing up as deficits. Now, how does the normal household take care of their budgets when deficits start showing up? They look at how they can cut expenses. No different than what a governmental agency should do. Should the city have cut expenses that were not part of a salary and benefit negotiations of all classifications of employees? For one reason, we might guess, the city council receives the same benefits as some members of management. Can't imagine why they would cut some of the gravy train benefits. 
Let's look at the city manager's contract for starts. Section 18, no reduction of benefits, and it reads, employers shall not at any time during the term of this agreement reduce the salary, compensation, or other financial benefits of employee, Mr. Chung, except to the degree of such a reduction across the board for all employees of the, of the employer. Question for this council to research. Since the city manager and other employees that get the benefit of fueling their vehicles at the city fuel station, is there a log at the city's fuel station that the employee has to complete that gives the date, time of day, and how much fuel is put into the vehicle and sign the log? Since they may not have to fill out a mileage report because they are using a city vehicle, is there any log that the employee fills in that lists the type of business they are going to transact by driving the city-owned vehicle. I have seen in city employees in city vehicles having lunch at McIntyre Square. The employees that do not get this benefit use their own cars. Maybe the use of city fuel does not amount to much. I respectfully ask you to take a look at how much it is costing the taxpayers. Fuel is expensive. Thank you. Thank you. Elsie Messman. Mayor, Council, staff, and the residents here tonight. My name is Elsie Messman, a resident of West Covina. First and foremost, I want to congratulate our three new council members for not wasting any time to get the city on the road to recovery. No more rubber stamps. Thank you. It would be nice to see qualified individuals appointed to different commissions, not friends that help you get elected or give you money. These. There are people at this meeting that have served, served and are qualified and have been passed over. Let's change this approach. My next item relates to the contract for our city manager. Number one, who wrote the contract for Mr. Chung? And number two, who pays for this contract? Please let me know what the complete package is worth for this employee. That means wages, pensions, health benefits, car, etc. And for Mr. Glassman, the taxpayers would like to know who he works for as it's not looking as he is not looking out for this city. The eighteen month servants pay was not, and I will repeat, was not consistent with other cities as stated. Councilman Warshaw and others proved that. Then when it comes to salary, you see the average being $223,000, and Mr. Chung is getting only $195,000. My question to council is how much experience does Mr. Chung have as a city manager, and does he have the qualifications? He was the head of the redevelopment department, and we all know what that turned out like. I want to read section seven, and this is, has something to do with uh, the previous speaker, Shirley Buchanan. The city recognizes that the employee's duties require, and he shall have the unrestricted use at all times during his appointment with the city of an automobile. Therefore, the city agrees to provide an automobile allowance of $400 per month. The employer, shall be responsible for paying for liability, property damage, contra comprehensive insurance in the amount of $100,000 per person and $300,000 uh, $300, per occurrence for the employee's automobile. And the employee shall be entitled to fuel his vehicle from the city fuel station for work-related auto use. No kidding. I said, my insurance went up, 
and I'm not even driving to work. So if he lives in Rancho Cucamonga, you can imagine what the city will have to pay for his insurance, and I don't think that is, it was taken into consideration. And also, if someone, whoever wrote the contract, for, forgot to include his house payment, gas, electric, and water bill, we're paying everything else. So the moral of this story is, you, you can sue your employer with a cost of almost a million dollars to the city, lose the case, and still get a promotion. If it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know, period. Thank you. Ben Wong. Mr. Mayor, uh, hope you're feeling better soon. Sorry to hear you under the weather and members of the council. Uh, in the three terms that I served on the city council, I think I earned a reputation as being a fiscal watchdog. And um, so what I'm about to say to you may come as a bit of a surprise. Uh, item number eight, uh, and besides being a fiscal watchdog, I, uh, and I think city staff, some of those that were around back in the days when I was on this council, uh, I think dreaded times when the budget would come up and I would ask some pretty pointed and tough questions. Um, and I'd like to point out that uh, the retirement benefit that increased that went to our public safety folks, I was the lone vote that voted against it. So this is going to come as a bit of surprise based on that background for those of you that don't remember my service on this council. But I am opposed to Mr. Spence's proposal to eliminate the CalPERS benefit for future council members. And why? Well, first of all, it doesn't affect any of you. In fact, two of you are full-time uh, full employment uh, under a PERS position, and I wouldn't think that you would vote to eliminate any of your PERS retirement benefit. I don't think we should begrudge the benefit that council members who work hard I think you get paid $800 a month. Uh, I know that doesn't compensate you, begin to come close to compensate you for the time that you spend serving this community. And so I really kind of see this particular vote, and it's easy to sort of succumb to it and say, I'm going to vote for that because I want to look like I'm a fiscal watchdog or that I'm looking out for the interests of the public. And the fact is, I think it's really much more about form over substance. It might be a symbolic gesture. If you're worried about symbolic gestures, think about the symbolism of devaluing the service that you give to this community. I think you earn every single dollar, whether I agree with you or not, on the decisions you make on this council. I think you earn every penny that you make. I think our city employees work hard for what they make. And it's often easy, and there is an element out in there in the public, I dealt with it when I was on the council, that believe that public servants ought not to be paid much of anything. They work hard for their dollars. You work hard for your dollars. Don't devalue it by making a symbolic gesture to eliminate almost nothing, really. And in fact, uh, to point out an, an inaccuracy, I think, in the staff report, uh, it points out that the net savings to the city is uh, about $6,700 a year annually if all five of you took the PERS benefit. But what does that divide out to per council member? Not a lot. And when you consider that if you eliminate the PERS benefit and you continue to be paid, and I would assume you would continue to be paid, and I would argue you should be, you would then be subject to Social Security. And so that $6,700 savings gets reduced down to about $3,200 or about $250, $270 a month savings per council member if you eliminated the PERS benefit. I really think it's more about symbolism. Uh, I think it's not something you should do uh, because, frankly, it doesn't affect you and it devalues what I, I think you send a message that says your service is unvaluable, and I, and I don't believe that to be the case. So thank you. Thank you. Alfred Williams. Good evening. My name is Alfred Williams. I'm a 30-year resident of West Covina. Uh, what I've come here to say is uh, I was concerned about uh, 
Shadow Park there, we've been had, I've had a few leagues uh, and a few other people that have been driving all over the park and uh, putting, uh, uh, messing it up, I should say. Uh, I contacted Chris, uh, uh, I think it was Sunday, and he responded back, uh, Sunday or Monday, I can't remember. Uh, and he responded back right away, and I, I thank him for his, uh, his response, and I'm pretty sure he's going to take care of it. But I think this council needs to also know about uh, what's, what's happening, because uh, we're getting hit in the area two ways. We pay a maintenance slope fee, which takes care of the paseo, and we also pay a park fee, which comes out, I guess, our taxes. Uh, <clears throat> so the um, people who are entering the park enter through the paseos. And the problem is that it's uh, part of our service personnel is doing it. And uh, if uh, I guess she's going to give, but in this picture I show a truck that's sitting up there. And I asked the gentleman, why was he sitting there? And uh, he reported, well, he had a right to be there because he was maintaining the fields. Well, his truck is partially sitting on the grass and partially sitting on the sidewalk. Um, it seems that the gentleman who let him in there had his car parked in the parking lot. But this gentleman had his car parked up on the thing there, and he seemed to think that that was a, a rite of passage that he was, because he maintained those fields, that he could just come up and park his car any way he wanted to. As you might be able to see that, there's quite a few uh, divots from uh, cars coming in. They come in off of Angela and also off of uh, Belinda and uh, Brenda. Uh, and they mess up the sidewalk. That's one area off of Brenda that's been run over so many times and it's been repaired. I know a minimum of about two times already, uh, maybe three. Uh, and they still the service personnel still coming on, and the gentleman with the truck uh, used the excuse that, well, service people do this all the time. Well, when he said that, normally I would take a picture like this, just keep it to see it happen again. But when he said that, then it, it bothered me. Because, and the, and the other gentleman said, well, I got a relative in West Covina, and they drive through the parks all the time, and on the grass, and park on the grass. So they were using this as a justification for messing up the parks, and I think this was all wrong. Also, you can see there are quite a few cracks and unlevel areas, and two weeks ago, a lady was walking her dog down there, and she tripped on one of these. And I marked it out and pointed it out in the photo there, and she broke her nose. Now, luckily, I don't think she's one of these people who like to come up with litigation to, you know, park, but if you go there, it's not due to roots. A lot of the areas that are being damaged are not due to roots. It's, being do it's done due to vehicles driving in, up into the area. And I think this needs to be taken care of. I'm sure Chris uh, uh, will take care of it. But I just wanted to bring up, and also, the uh, German up there, young men up there are playing basketball. Uh, a few of them asked me, since they know I come to the council meeting, would I bring up the fact that, and I didn't take a picture of it, but they, uh, could they get the uh, basketball courts resurfaced up there? Uh, a few people have slipped and pulled <coughs> groin muscles because this basketball court was originally put in by residents in the area. Uh, I have to, um, even though Mr. Herford has said he's been a big fan of the parks, uh, most of the stuff that has gone into Shadow Oak Park has been provided by the citizens. Um, the baseball, one, only one field was put in by the city. The building, the rec center, was put in by a grant. And uh, uh, until we spent the, park, the money to develop the lower area, which was supposed to be developed 30 years ago, uh, there was nothing really done up there, and there's still nothing really done up there. Uh, so I think, um, I don't know if that's a big cost to uh, resurface the basketball court areas. They also asked for some new lights, and I told them, you're probably not going to get that. <laughs> we just don't have the money for that. Uh, not new lights, but extra lights on the other court. But those uh, courts do need to be resurfaced and uh, to prevent any you know, slips, uh, uh, injuries there. And they, they are used seven days a week uh, from about uh, 3 o'clock until the lights go out. So it's, uh, a lot of people are using it. But uh, I also think that we need to talk to our service personnel and act, ask them, no, demand, that if they don't follow the rules, 
that they could be fired. Thank you. Thank you. John Schumacher. The last council meeting, I brought up a question about the propriety of the methodology used to hire the city manager. And basically, after reviewing the tape, was told the following, it's an old antiquated law, so we can just ignore it. Then we find out that it was an old antiquated law put in by the people of West Covina, which made me kind of think if the advice that we're getting from the city attorney is ignore the law, are we going to get that kind of advice if somebody wants to build on the land at City Hall? Because after all, you put in a rule that said the only way you can build, unless it's a governmental building, is by a vote of the people. And I remember Mayor Herford at the end saying, oh, can you imagine we need a, an election to repeal the law that was put in by the people? Well, is the same logic going to be used? that what council is going to give away their authority. Well, the council didn't give it away. The people took it away and said, what we want you to do is follow a specific procedure when you hire a city manager. We don't want backroom deals and you know, people that aren't at least minimally qualified based on these two organizations. It didn't seem like a, an unreasonable request. If it was old and antiquated, then it should have been removed. There's been numerous opportunities throughout the years to do that. So why not follow it? You know, when I heard the different things that were going on, that, well, there wasn't a vacancy. Well, I think if you ask the average person, ask the people who put this on the city, in the city ordinances, a vacancy is the job's going to be open and somebody else is going to get it. It wasn't a method that says, well, let's just hire him before the other guy really quits. That way there isn't a vacancy. That wasn't the purpose of it. You know, and I really have to wonder when I see ways of going around it. This, the advice we have gotten so far from the city attorney has been ignore the Surplus Land Use Act. And it cost us a million dollars in settlements. That's not even taking into account all the attorney's fees. Ignore, you know, environmental laws and things like that. And I don't know how much it's going to cost us up on San Bernardino Road. You know, and when the, we had a judge who actually said you don't have a valid city plan. So you can't do what you want to do. Mayor Herford, who was not sitting in the mayor's chair, said, well, we didn't want to spend the million dollars. We've been trying to avoid that. Well, actually, the word would be evade. Avoid is something you do legally. Evade is something you do illegally. Because we don't want to spend the million dollars. Guess what? We spent a million dollars on the settlement, and we're still going to have to spend the million dollars on the new general plan. So we get to spend two million instead of one. Many years ago, before I received my MBA, I was in law school. I made a mistake leaving law school because I figured out I'd be a good attorney, but I'm much better in business. Because I figured as a, as a business man, as a, as a good attorney, I'd make a very nice living for my family. We'd be able to live nicely and comfortably. I didn't realize if I was a bad attorney, I'd become wealthy. Because it's real simple. I give you bad advice, you pay me. And then I get to defend that bad advice in court, and you pay me again. Or if you're a good attorney, we wouldn't be paying all the legal fees that we have. It just makes sense. You know, so I am concerned when we have somebody state, I imagine I can find an attorney that says there's different rules in the city I can ignore. I imagine a developer could find uh, an attorney who would say, you know, those planning zoning rules they have, those are old and antiquated. Just ignore them until the city council either changes them or a judge says they're old and antiquated and you don't have to apply. We don't. I know our city attorney at times has fun saying to people who get up here and quote the law or whatever, let me see your bar card. Well, considering the advice and how many times we've lost in court based on that advice, I'd like to ask the same question. Can I see your bar card? Because I'm not sure <laughs> where, where it came from. Because when you continually lose, You've got to change. You've got to look at it. And we've got to look at how we hired our city manager, and that's nothing against Chris himself. Absolutely nothing, but there's still certain rules you have to follow, because what are the implications in other areas because of the duties he has and he signs for the city? Could somebody attack the city? More lawsuits saying everything he did is, is void, because he shouldn't be there. 
let's do it right, then we don't have any of those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Marino. Members of the council, members of the city staff, members of the audience. Everybody's been talking about the city and its financial problems. Well, this is addressed to the West Covina City Council and all West Covina taxpayers. I have a two-page statement and there's three attachments to that statement. The subject, why should West Covina taxpayers pay Andrew Pazmat and Chris Chung for work that they had already been paid to do by another city. City Council Member Steve Herford voted in 2007 to approve Resolution 2007-79 to give City Manager Andrew Pazmat a supplemental retirement that compensated him for work that he did when he worked for another city. Mr. Pazmat was paid by that other city when he worked there. Attachment number one to this statement is a photocopy of the resolution, the city staff report. The fifth sentence on page two of that document reads, tier two provides an increased retirement benefit to the city manager consistent with the terms of his contract. This tier two plan will convert the retirement formula for all years of prior CalPERS service at non-West Covina agencies to the CalPERS 2.5 percent. The city will pay the cost of both retirement plans. To clarify what Tier 2 gave Andrew Pazmat was a fireman or a policeman's pension. Andrew Pazmat was a public servant who was handsomely paid, but he wasn't a public safety member and he did not deserve a public safety retirement. It should be noted that LA County safety personnel get a 2% pension, not 2.5%. On December 18th of 2012, City Council Member Steve Herford voted to approve the contract of City Manager Chris Chung. Attachment number two to this statement is a photocopy of page six of Chris Chung's contract. I don't want to read it because I'm going to get close on time. But again, what Chris Chung's contract gives him is a public safety retirement. Chris Chung does not do a public safety job and is not entitled to a fireman or a policeman's pension. I have a question to ask City Council Member Steve Herford and the rest of this City Council. Why should West Covina taxpayers pay Andrew Pazmat and Chris Chung for work that they had already been compensated for when they were employed by another city? I do not think that having West Covina taxpayers give additional compensation to Mr. Pazmat and Mr. Chung for work that they had already been compensated is legal. I would like you to look at my third attachment to this statement. It is titled, Four Elements of a Contract. The first sentence reads, an agreement must contain four essential elements to be regarded as a contract. If any one of them is missing, the agreement will not be legally binding. Andrew Pazman and Chris Chung were already employees of the city of West Covina with a stated pay and benefit package. That is what they both had agreed when they came to work for this city. Why should both of those employees who are getting paid top dollar salaries get fully funded city pensions? No one working in the private sector in this city gets two fully funded employer paid pensions. Shouldn't these two employee pensions be looked at? The first element of a contract is the offer. There must be a definite, clearly stated offer to do something. In any contract, there is the exchange of labor or material in exchange for compensation for that labor and material. What additional labor or material did Andrew Pazmat or Chris Chung give the city of West Covina that requires the taxpayers of West Covina to compensate them for work that they had already been paid for by another city. I would like this city council to ask Chris Chung the following question. 
Would you allow any vendor to this city to charge this city for work that the vendor has already been paid to do in another city? Also, I would like to ask this council to determine who's responsible for allowing city employees to charge us for work that they had already been paid to do when they worked for another city. Thank you. Thank you. Forrest Wilkins. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Forrest Wilkins, resident of West Covina for over 40 years. I'll change the subject matter a little bit. Last uh, council meeting, I wasn't here, but there was a discussion about uh, buyback guns. <clears throat> I'd like to entertain the idea of maybe expanding a different way of uh, addressing the issue. First of all, let me throw out a hypothetical. What do we do with a senior citizen in our community that uh, maybe is 80 years old and is on a walker and so forth and has a uh, great-grandson who is not an outstanding citizen and this uh, senior citizen has some guns in his uh, house? Kind of a volatile situation. If we have this buyback program once a year or twice a year, it really doesn't address the issue. So we have several pawn shops in the uh, city. We have a uh, gun store up there in the Stater Brothers parking lot, or parking lot, but uh, shopping center. Maybe there could be some communication with these uh, businesses for them to offer to the citizens of some way of maybe storing guns for people who have them and feel a little eerie about having guns in their household because of maybe some, uh, re some uh, relatives that uh, aren't outstanding citizens. That would be one way of possibly safeguarding our community. Uh, we look back in uh, the history of uh, our country, the uh, terrible thing that happened with the mother knew her son was not mentally stable and she had guns in her house. Did she have an avenue of storing those guns someplace? But I think this would be a good uh, PR thing for the city, a good PR thing for the police department. They can start off by assigning a police officer to go around and talk to uh, the uh, pawn shops in any gun stores we have here, ask them if they'd like to participate in safeguarding the community. Could they provide some storage, maybe some rental for people who want to put their guns there for a short period of time? That's one thing to think about. We have a new chief of police. Maybe he can think about that. We'll give him an assignment tonight to start thinking about that. Sorry, chief, but you're the chief. Is he still here? Anyway, I think we ought to think outside the box and see how we could uh, serve our community better. Another way that we could advertise that, we could uh, put something in the Discover magazine, provide an avenue for the citizens that uh, if you have a gun and uh, you don't feel comfortable about it, uh, Maybe you don't want to sell it or something, but you just want to have it safeguarded temporarily. That would be an avenue for people to uh, safeguard their homes and safeguard their neighborhoods. So I invite the city council to consider something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Irene Fleck. Good, e good evening, all. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the staff and, and uh, Shannon Yahtzee for addressing the issue that I brought up that I was concerned about with the state of our alleys. Uh, I'm pleased that something was, was started, and I'm looking forward to more work being done on this. And then a change of pace. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that just make me smile. The uh, library, of course. The math program for the kindergarten through the second grade is, is a very interesting thing. It's every Thursday from 4 to 5. And in addition to the program there at the library, the children and their parents are encouraged to visit numico.com online for activities and projects that extend this sort of work. Another thing is 123 Play With Me, and that's every Thursday. This is the, the parenting program. It's a free five-week workshop. Uh, it, you do have to register for it, but they bring in experts and uh, it's for, uh, for the smaller kids, but it's for the parents. But it's a, a free workshop for parents to learn to play and bond with their children. And then the other thing, just one more thing, uh, is the Reader's Circle. This is every second Saturday at 10.30 to 11.30. And this is when the children read the, a, a selected book. It's sort of like a book club. 
they read up out loud and then they have activities that go along and reinforce this. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. one more thing. Don't oh. forget the uh, uh, thing this, this Saturday, Johnny Cash. It's at 2 o'clock at the park. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bruce Leinbach. Good evening, council, City Council, Mayor, and Councilman. Bruce Leinbach, last time I was here, I was telling everybody about back in Iowa, they had about a, the wind chill, they had a minus 50. They've had a heat wave back here now, and now it's in the 20s. So, uh, I was going to tell you, at 20, the, the water still freezes, the lakes are frozen over, and it's a great place if you have a snowmobile. So, if you want to go snowmobiling, go to Iowa. I want to welcome uh, our new chief. It appears he has a lot of qualifications, and uh, we support him. I'm sure that he'll do a good job. The issue I'm talking about right now is the crime report, West Cabina, what is the status? Uh, like I know, in some areas, they state that the crime was way up, and they're real concerned, and like the criminals are taking over. Uh, I live in the South Hills area and they had a bunch of burglaries and they form a, a neighborhood watch they had the meeting and they probably had about 100 people there also I own the some apartments down they call them Woodbridge apartments there's 117 fourplexes I own a couple of them and uh, probably our largest complex of uh, apartments and probably in between east of the six or east of the uh, 605 in, in, in L.A. County, but it led you a lot of crimes in there. I looked at the crime report, and there wasn't. And I, I agree, when you get a lot of apartments, uh, it's always, you're a little skeptical. But the thing I'd like to know is this. Uh, a police chief, a sheriff retired under kind of a cloud, but one thing I did not sus uh, dispute, in L.A. County, the murder rate is the lowest it's ever been, and the crime rate's gone down. Also, at, in the uh, city of L.A., reports the crime rate's going down. And I'd really like to know, so a lot of people are concerned, some areas, they feel like the crime rate's going up or whatever. How do we stand? How does our stand with other cities, and how do we compare? I mean, like, of course, the most important one of all, you almost forget, forget about all the rest of it, was the murder rate. Here's Pomona. I had, 12 murders last year, and they went up to about 29. As far as I know, our murder rate is real low. But overall, I mean, like I say, with all these criminals being released on parole, what's going to happen? But also, I'd like to give, give an idea, just to give us an idea how our crime compares to other cities. I feel we've got an outstanding department, and it looks like we have a good chief. So I'd just like to know... Uh, how we stand so everybody knows and keep informed. If it's high in certain areas, we can address that. And I'd just like to get a general idea. I wish the new police chief uh, well in his new job. Thank you. Okay, that concludes uh, oral communications. I had quite a few items on there, some political, um, some requests of staff. Um, do you have anything you want to comment there? Speaking to me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, first of all, with the uh, neighborhood watch uh, that Lola Finley indicated, I, I would appreciate if she would uh, let me know about that, and I could pass it on to City Council and, and let them know about it. So if you let me know about it, I could pass that message on to everybody. Um, let's see. There's, there's a couple of issues here. Uh, with, with respect to the general plan, I just want to point out to the residents that that is going to be a very um, – the city's going to be reaching out and um, getting the community involved. We're going to have many study sessions, uh, community meetings with the public. We, we desire your input in order to provide visionaries, uh, visionary goals on the general plan in order to move forward. The selection of the consultant will, it's, it's, it's not going to be a um, brief uh, process. It's going to be a very uh, well thought out process and we're going to make sure that we hire a consultant that has extensive experience with uh, preparing a general plan and, and is in line with the goals of the, of the council, which they will be able to um, 
actually uh, appoint that consultant. Although I would like, normally would like to refrain from talking about my contract, as it kind of seems self-serving, I, I do just want to point out a couple things is that um, with respect to, there is an indication that, uh, that I was getting additional compensation that's in line with what the former city manager received. That is not correct. Uh, that provision was provided to him based upon his contract. I do not have that provision where I get uh, increases in my PERS based upon my former years working with the city of Pomona for the past 10 years, which I would only get 2% at 55 uh, when I retire for that city. So I'm not getting any difference in that. With respect to what I'm currently getting at 2.5% at 55, that is what I w was receiving when I, when I first was hired in 1998, and that hasn't changed. So there is no increase as far as that uh, benefit. And, um, you know, and for what it's worth, the, the, the agreement that was negotiated between me and the prior city council was, was agreement that uh, is actually substantially lower than what the former uh, city manager was receiving, and um, it's just uh, that that's it is what it is, and you know, and I, I'm sorry that residents feel that uh, that it's not appropriate that I'm not paid, I shouldn't be paid that much, but that is the negotiations that occurred during that time frame, and and you know, based upon what the uh, council approved, that's that's where I'm at right now, and, and it's just unfortunate that uh, that this has been a topic here, and. And I'm, I'm a type of person that I don't want to be the subject of discussions because I believe that the, the benefit of the city is to move forward and, and address the issues that the council wants to address. And so, you know, the only thing I can really say to the public is that um, I don't know if I want to apologize for it, but essentially is that I just feel it's unfortunate and, and uh, hopefully we can move forward. Uh, if there's some other issues that the city attorney needs to address, right? Yeah. Um Mr. Mayor and members of the public, I, I, uh, there was reference to a, I think a safety, safety, you know, safety personnel, PERS retirement and so forth. And I just know from personal experience that the, the 2% of 55 is pretty much the standard regular employee PERS benefit that's being given by most cities now. Oh, and I do want to point out that I am not getting a public safety retirement, which is 3% of 50. And um, so I just want to point that out, just for clarification. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Warshaw. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, can uh, Shannon respond to Mr. Williams about uh, service personnel driving on uh, Yeah, property? actually, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, the Public Works Department and the landscape contractor do um, drive in the parks. We try to stay on the concrete. Um, it's sometimes necessary to um, maintain um, certain parts of the park. Um, obviously, we want to minimize any damage. Um, I think the complaint in question revolved around a sports league uh, civilian who was there maintaining the fields for the sports league. And I think community services, if Chris may want to um, touch on that, is, is handling that part of the issue. But I do certainly want to review those um, issues with my staff to make sure that we're um, not damaging the park. Thank you, Mr. Yossi, Councilmember Warshaw, Members Council. Uh, based on Mr. Williams' email, we immediately contacted the sports league that is utilizing Shadow Oak Park, informed them that no, they should not be doing this if, in fact, it was their vehicles, uh, and educated them that this could jeopardize their use of those fields if they, can, if they, they are responsible for the damage or continue to do so. Um, my staff and I, we did go out to the site yesterday and visit out there to see some of the damage um, that will be taken care of by our public work staff. And then in addition, as a follow-up comment to uh, Mr. Williams' comments about the basketball courts, our city staff uh, is putting that as part of the CIP request for this year's budget consideration. Um, if there's funds available in the park funds um, or other funding sources, if it's not available this year, it will be part of the, uh, the unfunded needs for parks, and so we'll be on the list to be done um, when funds are available as far as repaving it, but we will see about providing funding and for sure this year to restripe the course at least as well. Council Member Sykes. Thank you, Mayor Herford. Uh, Mr. Freeland, if, if you could also uh, maybe advise staff that when they visit the park, which is 
for some members, it's, it's a daily situation. And uh, generally what they do in order to save time is um, they sort of take a, it's like a, a shortcut going through the to sales versus driving into the parking lot, getting to the lock that's between the uh, cell tower and the basketball court. There is a large block of wood that can be unlocked and that would allow them to main, remain on the, on the cement doing their entry into the park most of the way. <clears throat> so I, I hate to bring that up to them because I know that it saves them time, but it also costs us money and, and aesthetics. So perhaps we can get them back because I see some use it and some don't. So now we can maybe just say, hey, if you, if you go in there, please just use the blocks because people are watching and they don't like spending their money unnecessarily. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Any items that uh, council would like to pull from the consent calendar? Number item number six. number six. We'll pull item number six. Any other items? Okay, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar except for item number six? Mr. Mayor, so moved. Uh, uh, to approve the consent calendar with item six being pulled. Okay, motion by Warshaw. Second. Second. Second by Spence. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's approved 5 0. Okay, item six, Council Member Spence. Yes, I pulled this off, uh, and I know I had a discussion with the city manager about it, and I just wanted to make sure because when I was looking over the components to it, it seemed boilerplate, but one of the components that I'm very interested in in the website is dealing with um, the public being able to access uh, the financial information and the budget information. And I know, you know, there's one company I know, OpenGov, that does Sierra Madre. I don't care if it's OpenGov or whatever, but something where there's there, that kind of information and detail so that people can look and see, you know, past year, present year, future year, what things look like, uh, very user-friendly, being able to search through the warrants, all that kind of stuff I think needs to be a component of our website upgrade because while well, putting stuff up in PDF is good and, and that kind of stuff, but the kind of interactive so that people can see the whole context and have more information I think would be better. And so when I was looking at the outline of the company, I mean, there were some bits and pieces of it, but that's something I'd really like to see them work towards or work, you know, work, work on as part of that functionality. That's, so that's why I pulled this off. That's it. I think that's a good idea. Um, is it possible for them to come do a presentation for us on uh, what they can and can't do? Or are they here tonight? We actually have a representative here this evening. Our project manager would be Mr. Tom Johnson, and he's in the audience tonight. Okay. If you have some specific questions for him. Uh, could you come up and just comment on what was said? Hello. Thank you. Um, yes, I don't have a presentation prepared for you, but we've done a lot of uh, work. You know, I mean, we have hundreds of government clients, and in fact, one of our recent clients, the City of Bell, who hired us after all of their issues. They use issues. OpenGov, too. They use OpenGov, too. Yeah, so we specifically built a transparency section on their site. We've done that a, a number of times recently because of that seems to be the demand these days to have a really clear area with, in fact, we have a whole set of guidelines that people are expecting in a transparency section. And um, one of our sites, actually, Costa Mesa, won a very top award for transparency. So we would make sure that we put that in the site map and very clearly accessible all that information in one central place. Okay. I mean, that, that's one of my focuses. The second part it deals with the social media aspect of it, because I obviously think there needs to be a social media aspect of it. Yeah. But some cities have had difficulty dealing with social media. Actually, I don't want to say this is my AB 1234 report, but it could be part of it, because that was part of our conference dealing with social media, is, you know, figuring out who's going to do what, and so it can be consistent in that kind of problem. Yeah. You know, that, that tends to be the problem with social media. People start out all gangbusters and then realize, man, they got to put something up every day, or, yeah. you know, they got to, how do they respond to X, Y, and Z, you know, those kinds yeah. of problems. And so that, I think that has to be some part that, that comes back to us at some point. Okay. And that's all I had. 
All right, thank you. Um, I, I'm just curious about how uh, staff interacts. Uh, if there's something to be posted, at, let's say it's just a picture on the front page of the Internet, do they call you or do they do that themselves? No, uh, you know, that's the great thing about our system. They can do everything themselves, so you don't have to call us, and we train you how to do it. So, yeah, I did notice on, one, on your current site there's still a picture of Santa Claus up there. So, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that the new system, they can really, you know, just quickly change, I mean, with our system. So. So you can change photos. Um, in fact, I mean, we usually have a really large banner on the home page that you can use to advertise, you know, programs or things that are going on. So you can change those quickly. Great. And remotely, too. So, yeah. Do you have something else? Uh, I was going to move oh, unless there's a Council Member Toma? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to concur with uh, Council Member Spence's comments about the transparency. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I bet a number of people. Council members probably went to the city manager and said, this is one of our goals. And a constituent had, I think, forwarded an article to, to me and to other people showing that, you know, the city of Bell, ironically, after all the stuff that had gone on, had won an award. I believe yeah. through the website with transparency and the financial picture and things like that. I think a lot of us took notice of it and probably communicated that and said that was a goal and one of the reasons why we'd want to um, change the website and improve it. Great. We make that a priority then, for sure. Okay. Any other comments? City Manager, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to, you can go ahead and sit down if you like. I just wanted to point out that uh, the, the reason why we, we're doing this process is that, is that we did receive a lot of input from council members that did indicate that our website needs to be more transparent, needs to be more user friendly. And, um, and our goal in this is to uh, hire a qualified consultant that can help us out with this process. Uh, some, of the, some of the things that um, council members, Councilman Spence, um, raised are modules that that would be a part of the whole uh, design process as far as what we can as far as layout and how we can interact with the uh, you know with the, with the with the website so that is something that staff uh, understands is is top priority as far as making sure that it's transparent user friendly and that you and, and interactive as well and so that's what the goals that we are seeking to, to pursue okay thank so, you that it yeah I'll go ahead and move this item Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Moved by Spence, second by Toma, I mean by Warshaw. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Okay, that Thank concludes you. the key. Thank you. Consent calendar. Okay, move on to item 7. This is an urgency ordinance establishing a moratorium to prohibit the issuance of approvals for the operation of adult-oriented business to study development standards. Uh, do we need a staff report on this or not? Everybody's pretty clear on this one. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Mr. Moved Mayor, by Herford, I, second by Sykes. Yes. Just before you take the vote, I just want to remind everybody that the urgency ordinance requires a four-fifths vote. Okay. I had a question. Yes, Councilmember Spence. I had a request on this item, and that is, it's my understanding that San Diego has one of the um, better laws when it comes to the operation of uh, adult, uh, I guess, strip clubs. I don't know what the right word is. Adult businesses with dancing, entertainment, whatever you want to call, try to call it. And um, I would like to just take a look at that as part of the component, the regulations that they have that uh, protect uh, women from exploitation there. That's, that's not a problem. Okay, that motion was uh, made by Herford, second by Sykes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We'll move on to the successor agency. City Clerk, roll, roll call. Chairman Herford. Here. Vice Chairman Sykes. Here. Board Member Spence. Here. Board Member Toma. Here. Board Member Warshaw. Here. Any changes to the agenda? No changes to the agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have no oral communications, any cards submitted, so we'll move on to the consent calendar. Uh, do we, we have the approval of minutes and then the uh, transmittal of the budget for the successor agency. Any comments, questions? Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Warshaw. I move to approve the consent calendar. Thank you. Approved by Warshaw. I'll second. Second by Toma. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries 5 0. Motion for adjournment. I'll move for adjournment. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Warshaw. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Okay, we'll move back to the uh, City Council agenda. Mayor Council Member reports, Council Member Spence, uh, amendment to the City Council authorized benefits to remove California Public Employee Retirement benefits for future Council Members. Council Member Spence. This is obviously one of the things that I said I would bring up as uh, when I was uh, before the voters, and although I'm a member of CalPERS, I did, not, I did decline the benefit from uh, the City of West Covina. However, in doing so, the City of West Covina, or actually any agency, in order to decline it, you have to like write on all the edges of the paper saying that you decline it. There is no like box even to say decline it. And so the net result of that is usually people sign up on it. And as I, uh, I disagree with, uh, obviously, former Mayor Wong, uh, for two reasons that the CalPERS benefit is different from all other benefits that anybody receives as a member of the City Council. And one is, once you sign up, you cannot leave. There's no way you can suddenly decline after you've signed the piece of paper and the initials um, saying that you want to be part of it. You can't get out. And then two is taxpayers are on the hook of it as long as you live. Um, in the state of California. That's how CalPERS works. They have an unfunded liability and taxpayers are always on the hook for it. So there are two key differences to the CalPERS benefit than all the other benefits that are received by the, by the hardworking city council, I guess, to, to uh, acknowledge Mr. Wong's uh, comments. But I, I think that's one of the reasons that I think we should remove this for part-time um, employees, which is what the city council is. So. Obviously, the council doesn't have to agree with that, but um, I'm keeping my pledge, and I would like to move that we adopt this resolution. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, any other comments? Do we have a second? Or, sorry, Councilmember Toma. The uh, so in, in November, when I had my first meeting with the city manager and with the um, with the finance director, I also declined the the. Uh, the PERS benefit and, and the health and retirement benefits. I do not think, contrary to what I think I heard earlier on, that, that Mr. Spencer may be a member of PERS, and I'm a member of PERS in my job with the Department of Justice. I don't think this benefit would affect us differently than it would a person who's not a member of PERS. It's the same benefit, I, I believe, in terms of what money you would actually receive. Um, it's in part because I, I don't think that this would discourage good people from running for office. I certainly don't want to do that. I don't think we should be discouraging good people from running for office. Um, and it is a part-time job, and that was sufficient for me to agree that this doesn't need to be a benefit that the City Council receives. Okay, any other comments? Council or Mayor Pro Tem Sykes. Thank you, Mayor Herford. Um, I would just like to say that uh, there is a lot of discretion when you become an elected official, and in this case, um, I know that I would like to concur with um, um, with former Councilmember and Mayor Ben Wong in that um, for me, um, seven days a week, unless I'm ill, I'm doing something for the city. And for instance, uh, today, my day started out, I left home at 6.30, and um, I have yet to go home. It's not every day that I work like this, but it's every day that I do something for the city, and that's because I choose to do it. And so I, I do want to say, depending on where you sit and how you feel about the trust that people give you and the burden you take on yourself, um, and that's up to your decision. But um, um, I just want to say that um, there are some of us who take this very serious and we try to deliver every day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comment? No? Okay. Um, let me say this. Um, being on the city council since 1990, um, they're really, I mean, you don't do it for the money. That's number one. Uh, there hasn't been a pay raise, uh, although this council could give itself a pay raise, could, could have done it back in 1991. And, and you're allowed so much of a percent each year. And uh, so now what you see around us are cities with, uh, you know, 30, 40,000 people that uh, make twice as much as us, or at least once and a half times more than us. 
So it obviously isn't about the money. Um, most people do this because uh, they want to. There, there's, uh, you know, a desire to do something better for the community. Um, the PERS benefit is very minor. Um, I don't see it as um, a, a benefit that draws people to run for city council, and yet um, it is something that uh, I think is just uh, there, and I hate to take anything away from our city council because we really haven't uh, increased our stipend or done anything to uh, to uh, make this position more beneficial. So if we start taking things away, I think it uh, might be to a detriment. So I would uh, I would not support it. Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, may I comment on yes. that? Um, I decided to accept the purse. Uh, just wanted everyone to know that. I think it's an individual decision uh, by the council members. Uh, if members don't want to take it, I appreciate that they don't. Uh, as council member uh, Herford and uh, council members uh, Sy uh, Sykes have said, um, it's very small, very minor to the city, but uh, not for me individually, but I think for uh, future council members, that little bit, maybe it will make a difference uh, for them to run. Maybe it won't. But I think it's an individual decision. Um, if people don't like it, um, then the, the public won't vote us in in four years. And, and you know what? If you're not in for that fifth uh, year, you're not going to get it. So uh, um, I think that more than speaks for itself, and the people have a right to make that vote. Uh, uh, at re-election time. Okay, seeing that, we have a motion by Spence, second by Toma, to amend the uh, council authorized benefits to remove the CalPERS benefit. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. 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 Motion fails three to two. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, according to the new Brown Act rules, we have to announce the result of the vote, and that would be that Spence and Toma voting no, the remainder of the council, Sykes, Herford, and Kowarshaw. Aye, I'm sorry. Okay, Spence voted aye, Toma voted aye, the remainder of the council voted no. Okay, so we need to uh, call that out every yeah. time. Well, we have a unanimous vote, and you, you call, you know, you don't have to have a roll call, but in the case of an instance where you have individual votes you have to announce it okay thank, thank you. you uh the number nine veterans memorial public art project councilman warshaw thank you mr mayor uh the reason why i brought this up was uh multifold first of all uh the city has been looking at uh, not only the city but the but the the public's been looking at a veterans memorial since 2010 uh, groups within the city have tried to get donations. They have gotten donations, and I appreciate their work. I also appreciate the work they've done in helping to design it. Um, but it's been almost four years uh, since they started that. It needs some help. And frankly, uh, if you look at... Um, uh, this last uh, Veterans Day, although we did have a good turnout and it was a good ceremony, uh, there wasn't a lot there um, to show that it was better. Uh, it was for veterans, and I think a veterans memorial here at a public site at City Hall is the best place for it. Um, there's also funding for it. There's the uh, money that's been raised uh, through donations, and hopefully we will still get donations from uh, individuals and from businesses. Um, but also we have uh, uh, the money that when a business uh, or, or when a, bu uh, a building is built here that is required they either put in artwork at that facility or pay so much for a fund to develop artwork throughout the city. Uh, we do have uh, the money to complete a, a veterans memorial with these funds and frankly it's not that easy to find sites to put things, uh, artwork uh, and 
things like a memorial in the city where uh, it can be looked at and seen by all. Um, I would like to use this as a start to make our um, uh, veterans uh, more appreciated. Uh, I think this will help when people go by and see it. Um, and I think it's a start also to get more community involvement uh, when we have uh, our veterans uh, uh, services and any other type of uh, memorial services here in the city. Uh, and that's why I've asked this to uh, uh, come forward tonight and to be agendized. I think we do need a consultant. Uh, I think what was done was good, but it was only based on a small amount of dollars. Uh, and we need to move this forward as quick as possible. I think a consultant can add to it to make it more invaluable to the people. And I believe the consultant has done things uh, like this before. And I'd also ask to, uh, like, uh, our community services director to respond to that, if he could. Thank you, Councilmember Warshaw. Uh, yes, the consultant that has been utilized by the planning department as part of the review process. Um, that firm has done and overseen the Cory Lytle sculpture that many of you are familiar with out in front of the Big League Dreams complex, as well as the public art pieces that are at Cortez and Cameron Park. Um, as far as those city projects. But in addition, that consulting firm has assisted the planning department with a variety of other public art pieces that have been done on, on private developer properties as well. And if there's any further questions, both myself and uh, Mr. Anderson are here answering questions. Any other questions? Council Member Spence. I know at the last meeting I said I'm not really a fan of increasing the cost of doing business in West Covina by providing quote unquote public art. Um, but I do think that there's a role for public funds in dealing with public memorials, which this is. So I support this going forward. Uh, I'm a little concerned in that, um, you know, the amount of the consultant almost matches the amount of the money that's been raised by the volunteers uh, for the memorial fund. And so, you know, to me, it kind of looks like it's kind of a weird, weird situation that we're in, where you know they got ten thousand from the Castucci Foundation and about a thousand dollars in other donations, right? And I think Nick Lewis is donating a stipend to them, and or something like that. But I mean, but it just seems odd that we're hiring a consultant that kind of equals the amount of money that's already been in place for the Veterans Memorial. And so, I also question how we're going to involve that Veterans Memorial effort with the consultant to make sure everybody's on the same page and how that gets signed off on. And so while I'm supportive of this, I kind of question the amount of money and, because I assume some work went into it before, and also how that will gel with the volunteer effort that's there. Well, if I can just respond to that real quick. It's the, first of all, the consultant is just doing more than design. They, they would also actually uh, come up with the spec specifications and materials in order to be able to bid it out as well. So that, that's an important component as, as part of that. With respect to the design, they would be meeting with the VFW and, and with city staff to, to, um, to talk about the design and, and ways of, 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 of presenting something that's compatible and desirable with everyone involved. Mayor Pro Tem Sykes. Thank you, uh, Mayor Herford. Uh, this kind of reminds me of um, uh, an article that I saw on a beautiful portrait that uh, I can't remember exactly what it was about, but I know that there were some tears in someone's eyes because they signed on to someone that was inexper ex inexperienced, not proven, and they destroyed a very valuable piece. This represents us. It represents the, the, what we want to do in the way of the best for those who have given their all. And I think that I'd rather go with someone that we know has delivered, uh, someone that we trust. And um, with that, I, I, I support um, um, the program to go forward so that we can um, get this done expeditiously and 
I would be comfortable with the person that's, that's been proven. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Tomo. And thank you. I just want to say uh, I can think of no uh, better, more worthy project for our public arts funds than this. And uh, to thank uh, Councilman Warshaw for coming up with the idea. I do. I support this um, as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, City Manager Chung. Yeah, I just want to point out that a part of this process would be establishing a budget as far as the total cost of the project. Um, staff is, wants the council to, uh, to, um, to I guess, uh, understand that we, we have an additional $140,000 in public arts uh, funds and would be looking to try to budget within that in order to bring back a quality project, unless the council wants to reduce the budget. But we're, we're, we're thinking that it would be good to but to budget that amount. But we would bring that back when we award bid. Okay. Um, let me ask a question. We have a drawing here. Um, it's the drawing that has been the monument for probably five years. Uh, who drew that? Uh, Mr. Ogden drew that. Okay. Even though it says West Korean Public Works on it? I'm sorry? It says West Korean Public Works on it. Uh, George Ogden drew this? If I, uh, Mr. City Manager, uh, just so for the council's benefit, uh, Mr. Ogden provided the conceptual design, and the design that um, Mayor Herford is referring to is actual construction drawings that the Public Works Department assisted Mr. Ogden in helping to bring his concept to realization. Okay. Um, you know, I, I agree with everybody what they've said. I think this is uh, something I'm, I'm happy to support, and uh, uh, I've kind of I've grown attached to this. I really like this monument. I, I, I like the grassroots effort on it. I remember when it first was brought to us, I remember uh, the leaders saying, we don't want city money, we want to do this on our own. And uh, that was very admirable and uh, you know, I, I was part of a group that donated to it. So there's uh, a couple things at play here. Um, that money that's already been donated, part of the, uh, I think the original plan was to recognize some of those people, first off, that donated money. Um, and secondly, that money was donated to, I think, this drawing or, or something very similar to it. Um, I have a different take, I mean, not different, I mean, it's similar to, I think, Councilmember Spence on consultants. Um, if you go out to the courtyard and you see the, uh, used to be a water fountain right behind the stage there, and we hired an art consultant to do that. and. Uh, it was a beautiful water fountain. I loved it, and it kind of added to it. And then we went in with some like de desert stone type statues, and it was just it was horrible. I thought, um, so I, I didn't care for it. And we spent $150,000 on that. I think um, I really liked the grassroots effort on this. I liked the fact that they, they, George was a member of VFW, probably the president. Uh, uh, Lloyd, I mean, he's. He's a steel worker. He knows how to build things. Um, and I, I think that they came up with something that's really good. I don't have a problem doing, uh, and, and I argue with my wife on this all the time, too. She always wants to bring in a consultant to tell me what to do in the kitchen. And, you know, I tell her, hey, you've you got a good eye. You can do that. And, you know, I'm, you're, I'm, rec I'm happy with your recommendation. But they always want somebody else to advise them. So. What happens if we get the consultant and we don't like the concept? What if we like this concept? We're still at 10000 bucks, right? Um, that is correct, but the consultant can also help us in, uh, to develop this concept with the, with the materials as well. So if the council does have the option to say, we want to go with this concept right here, and, and we can follow through with that. Um, Therefore, but do we need to pay the consultant? Therefore, the consultant may not be necessary, other than we probably want some help with identifying the types of materials. I believe this, the design on this was a stucco exterior. I don't know if the council would like a different type of outside. Yeah, so. I don't have a problem with that. Um, the committee was kind of the ones who were making the decisions on the sure. design. Are they going to be involved in the consultant? A absolutely. Okay. But, and again, you know, the council does have the option to... Do they want the consultant? The uh, committee? I believe we did talk. Thank you, Mr. Chung. Yes, city staff met with the VFW representatives last week. Um, two of them are here today, George Ogden and Lloyd Johnson. We did have a discussion about the need for our consultant. Um, there was some significant discussion back and forth, but overall, they, as a group, they did support moving forward with staff's recommendation. Okay. Um, the original price tag on this, I thought, was like 30000 maybe forty. And now we're talking 150. 
I, I so. believe is I, I, I heard uh, fifty thousand dollars, but I could be wrong. But okay, I just thought you just said there was a budget of up to one hundred fifty thousand. Well, no, I'm saying that we have a, about another one hundred forty thousand in the public arts, and we could utilize those funds. Oh, I see. To, to you're saying it's not going to be that much. Well, I'm saying that we can design up to a hundred forty thousand dollar project if you like. Yeah, I. You know, I, I'm okay with this. I really do like it. I mean, I could support that. I, I, I don't know what, I mean, I trust the committee that they're going to come up with something. But, um, you know, this was a grassroots effort, and I hate to take and give it to some stranger that nobody really knows and, you know, have, and I, although the committee's involved, they'll have input. But, um, so I'm kind of torn. I mean, I really want it, and I'm going to probably support the consultant. But, uh um, I wish the committee would have said, hey, this is what we want to do. Sick Council, can we use the public arts fund? Let's go do it. You know, that would have been my solution. Council Member Tona, Toma. Well, uh, I'm glad you, you raised that question. I actually was under the impression that this was the design, the basic design that we were going to go with, and the consultant was more or less to, um, you know, ensure, you know, help select artists, ensure the art was durable, installed correctly, that there were some features of it that, that they were going to work off that design. Is that not the case? They're going to start from scratch and we may get complete, uh, just as a question for clarification in terms of what the consultant is actually supposed to do. I, when I saw this picture, I thought that that was the basic design that we were going to go with and I said, that's fine. We probably need an expert to sort of make sure that the right materials and spacing and places for the plaques and things that were envisioned get done correctly, but I did not know or think that this was going to be a potential redesign from scratch. Let me try to address a couple questions here and then I'll ask Mr. Anderson to interject as well. Uh, going back to Mayor Herfer's comments regarding the cost of the project, Public Works did estimate about $50,000 on the project, depending, because at the time it was also based on volunteer labor and donation of materials as part of that estimate. And that could, depending if we use granite versus marble versus stucco. So there's a variety of different materials that could significantly increase the project there. Uh, with regards to Council Member Thomas' comments, uh, when we met with the VFW representatives last week, the intent on both the committee and city staff is to present the VFW's uh, proposal and design to the art consultant um, and say that this is what we've come up with, this is what we as a group want to see. Uh, but part of the discussion we had is we don't want to say completely no to any other design in case something does come up that the committee does approve or like better. But this is the intent is that we want to move forward with the design that has been presented. And, and also I think I'll have Jeff Anderson expand on this, but since we are using public art fees, that was consideration as far as the process. And if I can just have, you know, there's a lengthy discussion about that, Jeff. So can you elaborate, please? Yes, thank you. So the public art fees come from developers who have submitted funds because they, weren't, they didn't install art on their own property. So they're dedicated for public art. Not necessarily public monuments, but public art, something done by an artist. So that's part of staff's role and part of the public art consultant's role is to make sure that what we're using the funds for is actually an artist. An artist is involved and it's not just something that, that's constructed and therefore may put the city at risk because those funds were, were donated for uh, for the construction and implementation of art. Um, we would work with the, we, we talk, as, as Chris mentioned, uh, we will work with the committee from VFW. We, we communicated that to them at the meeting uh, with the public art consultant. We make sure we get the parameters. We can keep pretty much the same design if that's the idea. The public art consultant that we have has access to multiple artists who might want to come up with some designs, implementations that might um, enhance that or modify it. And there may be some discussion about with VFW, with staff, and the Planning Commission would have some involvement at that at some point as well, with, with uh, including an artist piece with, within the, the, the scope of what's before you tonight. So that's sort of what we discussed at that meeting and what we envisioned. Councilmember Spence. So if I understand this right, um, well, first of all, I hope we're not giving George Ogden $10,000. So I don't want to make that clear. I hope that that's clear. Uh, um, but, uh, um, but if I understand this, what, you're, what you just said, uh, is that part of what this consultant will do is to make sure that this, uh, what we approve tonight, qualifies for the use of public art funds in order for us to fund it, that otherwise we may not be able to fund it that way. Is that correct? That's part of the role they would play, yes. Okay. Um, that's helpful in clarifying some of this expenditure. You know, because the second part is, you know, I agree with Mr. Toma and Mr. Herford, is that, you know, I, one of the reasons I balked 
at this is I don't want to step on you know what a grassroots design was and where they were focused on I don't want to do that and also what people gave money to, to thinking they were going to get you know that's the other aspect whenever you're working with someone who where people already gave money they think they're going to get a particular thing and then I don't want some consultant to come in and just change it all around um, the only other thing I wanted to add was that uh, Home Depot this could be part of my AB 1234 report Home Depot actually provided materials and labor to completely redo the Montebello veterans memorial that they had in their park that had become dilapidated and that's because Home Depot has funds set aside in their nonprofit for use for veterans for recognized veterans so knowing we have a Home Depot I think that's something we might want to look at as well yeah I've, I've talked to Home Depot they do all this funds. let me ask you this is there a reason why it's ten thousand dollars I mean if we come in on the first meeting she says uh, and they all say this is great let's go with it well the person we've used is they're not going to charge ten thousand dollars it's going to be a, a as needed basis so the the ten thousand is is sort of a an allowance we're not going to just turn the ten thousand dollars over to them either we're just going to pay them as needed we, we have an hourly fee that we we um, we contract with them on Okay, that makes a little more sense. Then. All right, thank you. Do we have a motion? Or did we already have a motion? I forgot. No? Okay, do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, uh, prior to the motion, I'd like to ask a question. Sure, uh, Councilmember Warshaw. Uh, uh, Mr. City Manager, uh, so do we need to set a maximum uh, in using the arts funding? Is that what you uh, said to us? Uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, you need to set it right now. I think I was more or less trying to express that, um, you know, if you want to, you could say that we could spend up to that amount. Uh, you, we just wanted to let you know that that's the amount that we have currently in there, and in the process of, of designing this, that, you know, the design could, when you design something, you need to know how much you can afford, essentially. So I understand that. I, I guess I am saying that I, it would be helpful if you identified or understood that we would be spending up to $140,000. I have one more question. Um, when we have our Veterans uh, Memorial Day events here at City Hall, um, it is so hot out there. I mean, it is just horrible. And I know that's not public arts, but uh, if there's any <clears throat> anywhere to use some funds somewhere to, you know, maybe have shade cloth come over the top somehow or whatever. I mean, I think that'd be great because uh, it's just every time I go there, it's a, it's a hot box, you know, and uh, this is going to be back in the corner. We might be able to get some shade for some trees, but uh, all the staging is up front, and it's just not conducive to a large audience, and I think that hurts the attendance. So um, that would be another thought. And one more thought I'd had because a resident had mentioned this to me was a statue of Lillian Keel. Um, who we already have a plaque on the wall, but the, they would like to see... Um, us do a statue of her. So that was just some other input I got on this. So anyway, I do have a motion and a second. Mr. Mayor, uh, so moved. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I, I'd like to move to um, uh, look at spending up to one hundred and forty thousand um, dollars, and maybe to include some other artwork at the same time as you mentioned, um, but that we. Uh, keep to uh, what's prevented, uh, or been presented by the uh, BFW as the basic design of this. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Sykes. Or Mayor Pro Tem Sykes. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 -0. Okay, next we have AB1234 conference meeting report. Um, I think we have some reports. Mayor Pro Tem Sykes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Herford. I attended a two-day seminar. I went to downtown Los Angeles, and it was sponsored by Law Seminars International, and it was about the cell towers. Um, for most of us who our home is, is the most valuable thing we have, and of course we love our city where we live, and we want to uh, try and keep West Covina as beautiful as possible. 
And uh, those cell towers, sometimes uh, when you do notice them, most of us don't even really notice them. But when you do notice them, sometimes it, it can get your attention. After this um, seminar, I, I do have a different perspective in that we still want to work uh, to keep our city as, as, as beautiful as we can. But uh, when you look at um, what's projected for the future, you have to conclude that um, the telecom infrastructure provides a pretty much another utility like water, electricity, gas, and it has to have an infrastructure to function. And for most of us, especially those of us with, who have gotten into the smartphone situation, um, once you get accustomed to it, it's hard to live without it because it provides so much information. And then when you look at back to 9-11 and you look to see what's happened with Snowden, you have to understand that um, what's, what's coming down the pike is huge. And when you look at every carrier, they all have a net. They have a network. And, and this is layered upon layer. Every time you get a, a different provider for a service, um, that's built on a, on a network. And so we, I, I think all of us are dedicated to doing the best we can uh, to make things um, uh, presentable and, and to protect, protect the aesthetics of the city. But um, it's just fueled by, by us, by what we want. And we want more. <laughs> that's, just, that's, that's just the way it is. Uh, we have uh, education that's being conducted by a distance. That can't be done without that <coughs> infrastructure. And, and that's for our children going forward. Uh, to, um, so to end this, well, we, we, we will do the best we can, but uh, uh, we're gonna have to build out on the infrastructure uh, in order to accommodate the technology and what's coming forward. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully you won't get too angry with us. We're going to do the best we can. Uh, like I say, all these guys uh, that, that are up here with me, uh, dedicated to the city, and we're going to do our best um, to uh, preserve the aesthetics, but we are going to have to build out. Thank you. Is that Fred Sykes? <laughs> 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 yeah, well. Education, uh, you know, it, it changes your perspective. Education. And I'm telling you, it was, it was, it was really surprising. There's some things I don't want to talk about, but I was shocked, you know, uh, um, and, and it's, education will, will sock it to you. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> It'll uh, give you a different perspective. Thank you. It is an issue that, uh, you know, both with the health concerns and uh, the placement of cell towers that is, is very sensitive. Uh, but I know my kids, um, you know, don't have landlines. A lot of people have no landlines, so they kind of rely on the cell phone. Okay, any other AB1234 reports? Oh, okay, let's start with uh, Council Member Warshaw, go ahead. Do you want to do it together? I know you all went to the new Council Member retreat or something. Okay. Um, uh, the three of us attended the uh, League of California Cities uh, conference for new council members and mayors. This was at uh, the end of January. It was a three-day conference in Sacramento um, at, the, at the Sheraton. They had a number of uh, different sessions on various subjects, such as the, uh, uh, the basics explanation of local agencies and ordinances, conduct of meetings, uh, legal powers and obligations of cities, land use planning, uh, relationships between council and city staff, uh, social media, uh, financial responsibilities of the city council, including the budget and revenues, 
and our role as public officials. I thought that the uh, conference was uh, very well organized. They do a good job. The speakers were very um, knowledgeable and, uh, and uh, impart a lot of lessons, and we were given a lot of written materials as well. Great. Anybody else, or does that cover it? Council well, I, I would concur with uh, uh, Council Member Toma. Um, although, uh, for me personally, some of the things dealing with land use, I think, were most valuable. Obviously, you know, the the hour and a half about what the League of Cities does. I'm quite familiar with what the League of City does, and um, you know, quite familiar because of other professional things I've done, of how it works and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, I think land use and the financial stuff were all good components that uh, were, I think, very useful to us, as well as the networking with other council members, I think, is something that can't be underestimated, um, of seeing what's going on in other cities near us. Um, that are like ours, that aren't like ours, um, as far as a way of generating ideas and ways to look at different problems as well. I think that was very valuable as well. I was going to say interacting with local, uh, with legislators, but I don't think that's a useful, but that's just me. So anyways. <laughs> Councilmember Warshaw. Uh, I would uh, agree with the, uh, my other two council members. Um, land use wasn't quite as important to me uh, after being on the Planning Commission, uh, but I was... Um, uh, very happy to hear them talk about uh, general plans, how to update them, what are the best uh, routes to do that, uh, since that's one of the things that we're looking to do in this city. And the other was <coughs> the transparency that they talked about, the websites they talked about. Um, and as you can see, this council has uh, started work on that, and we hope to make that uh, fully apparent to you that uh, we have listened to the public um, and we are trying to do everything uh, to meet your wishes on that and I think this uh, uh, the meeting held by the League of Cities was a great help in, in making sure that we're on the right track okay thank you council member comments uh, any comments from anybody uh, council member Toma. I just have one um, you know, uh, and Ms. Arndt spoke earlier about the Edgewood High. I saw a small piece in an article we were talking about earlier on that uh, they won the super quiz in the academic Kathon competition. And for those of you not familiar, this is a very prestigious uh, competition. They won it for LA County. I'd, I'd love to see a bigger profile of who the students were who won that. Um, having done academic decathlon myself as a high school student, I remember what a huge undertaking it was. There's hundreds of hours spent studying for this competition. I, it's really, I was, you know, I just haven't seen the LA Times and I was just so surprised and happy to see the, a school from West Covina do that. So I'd like to see more, as somebody earlier on said, I'd love to see an article in the San Gabriel Valley Tribune. I'd love to meet these kids myself. So just congratulations to, to that team. Okay, great. Yeah, we could uh, possibly have them come to the council meeting. I don't know how many there are, but uh, we'll find out. A um, couple of notes. Uh, this Saturday at, I believe it's 10 o'clock, we have the LA Fitness grand opening over at uh, Barranca in the 10 freeway. And next week it's four, was it four wheel? Uh, opens up on in the Lantern Festival. I don't know the exact date on that. It's during the week, but Chris, you know that, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the Lantern Festival is the 15th and 16th, which is a Valentine's weekend. That's Saturday and Sunday. It'll be all day on both days from 11 to 6, with Saturday evening at 5 p.m. We'll have the special lighting of the lantern ceremony at, at Hong Kong Plaza. So we're inviting everybody to please attend to that. Okay. And then um, uh, Little League uh, opening start, West Community Youth Pony Baseball, this uh, Saturday at 12 noon. So... Um, Council, I think, is aware of all those. I have one more item, and that's the, uh, we all, I believe, re received a letter from the West Green Alliance Club regarding their night on the town event. In the years past, we have uh, supported the, the event with uh, maintenance crew to clean up and to set bar barricades up and stuff like that. Uh, I'd like to see us co-sponsor with them to do the same thing. And, uh, they're not asking for anything more, just what we've done in the past. So um, if we could have that agendized for the next meeting. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Mayor. Uh, I did have one comment. I'd like to um, ask to get agendized, uh, again, looking at putting council meetings uh, back on uh, cable TV or on local TV um, in, in doing a little bit oh, yeah, yeah. of uh, study. Um, I think if we don't use captions with people's names or anything else underneath like had been done before, 
that we pretty much already have the equipment to do that at, a, uh, at no additional cost or nearly no additional cost. Uh, and then the only thing we'd be looking at is uh, personnel to run it. I think we can look at Mount SAC, and I think we'd be spending probably less than you know, $500 to $1,000 a month. Uh, so I'd like to uh, take a look at that because I think it's something that the uh, public's been asking for. Okay. We can have that put on the agenda. Any other comments? Okay. I have an adjournment. Uh, uh, Georgia Jennings passed away, um, wife of uh, former council member and mayor Dick Jennings. Uh, <coughs> And I don't really have much more information, but we give our best our thoughts and prayers to the uh, family, the Jennings family. So with that, I'll make that a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Warshaw. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.